Hello everybody, my name's Atley. Welcome back to my Satisfactory Let's Play, Episode 8. Uh, with a bit of a mixed bag of things to get done this episode, so I'm going to get straight into it. One of the things is the, the way that I've set this factory up without having any output into like big boxes and back to central. I'm not using the output of this factory, I'm just putting them into storage. So as you can see, the belts are stacked up and all of the boxes are full. So reinforced iron plates, modular frames and rotors. And I'm not using those products anywhere else yet. So the boxes are full. And I've set this save up on a dedicated server running on a home lab low power PC that I have that runs all the time to do other things for me on my network at home. Uh, so this is running as a dedicated server. And as a result of that, this is basically running and producing all the time. So I'm wasting resource here. Uh, I could be getting product out of this. So what I'm going to do real quick to start the episode off, because I think it's a, it's a common thing that we all do or should do for this game what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a little overflow system for all three of these products and send the output into a awesome sink doesn't matter whether that's particularly well aligned because I'm going to take the feed for this off the back going forward and then what I'm going to do over here is put in an awesome sink on this corner. Uh, let's get rid of this belt because I know I want to put another splitter here. You basically need a splitter for each of the finished product lines. So I'm going to put another splitter here. Like that. And then I'll stick the belt in there to connect that up. That can go back to there. And then the product will continue to flow towards the storage box. But the 50% of it or all of it, once it's backed up like it is there, will come out of this or this instead. And then I can put a awesome sink. And at least then while the server's running, I'll be getting tokens in the background. So I'm not wasting product, basically. So off the front of that um, awesome sink we need to put a merger in because we've got three products and we want to merge all three products and that's that line and that line again i think mark one belts are fine for the amount of stuff that's being merged and what we've got there now is if i power up that awesome sink <laughs> didn't mean to do that we've now got rotors all of the excess rotors that can't fit on this belt to go into storage are now being put straight into the awesome sink and that will create uh, quite a significant boost to our tokens so this needs to merge onto that front And that's going to be the reinforced iron plates. And then off this side, I need to put another lift. Which can merge out the front this way. And then I need to take a line from there. To that. Back to. Up to maximum height. Not maximum height, that height. And then in. And then now, I've just done a little overflow there. And... I want to unlock smart splitters so that I can do this a bit more intelligently. You know, smart splitters, clues in the name. But at the minute, I haven't got smart splitters. But because this belt is saturated, I'm not like wasting anything that could be used for something else. Normally, with a smart splitter, you would only send an overflow, whereas this is going to send 50% until it's overflowed. But anyway, the point is, now I am going to be gathering tokens. I've got three already. That I haven't yet claimed. But I'm going to be gathering tokens at pace here. So that's one thing I wanted to do real quick. At the start of this episode. And this episode is mostly going to be about 
uh, maybe some unlocks, a little bit of temporary. It's a, it's a bit of a mixed bag of things I want to achieve today. This is my steelworks. This hasn't yet got to the point of filling the bin. So we'll just leave that running. But I want to build something temporary that will help me make some progression. Because I need some uh, encased concrete beams. Or encased industrial beams. And the way I'm going to do that, but they, they require a combination of concrete and steel beams. I've got the recipe for them unlocked. What I was going to do is put down a another storage box. Might need to extend this floor a little bit. That'll do. A bit of OCD there. <laughs> Going to sort out the, the tiny corners. And then we'll stick an assembler. Alongside. And then another storage box. Output coming this way. into there I can then manually put beams in that one set this recipe to encased beams so it needs 30 and 24 so type 1 belts will do power that up back to that hole yep, no clipping that's fine and then we need concrete which is this box I'm going to do it on a lift. Just so that... I can still access these boxes. And then the output of that... Wants to come into this new box. Beautiful. Now what we'll start getting now, once the concrete flows, and concrete is a never-ending flow here, so what we've done is that box, the concrete box, was almost full, and is now feeding this assembler. And, and this is temporary, this is just, once I've got enough in this box, getting concrete? Yeah, yes it is, so it's producing. Once I've got enough concrete beams in this box, to do early game unlocks and things, I'll just delete all of that stuff. I just didn't want to do it off cam and then have it magically appear that I've suddenly got encased beams and you haven't seen me build anything for them. So that's a temporary measure. And then there's another temporary measure. In the last episode, we moved our hub up onto this shelf. There's a thing that I want to do. I need a miner, I only need one. Maybe I'll take my shards in case. No, I don't think I need to overclock. For what I'm planning. So I'm going to put down another miner. Because I happen to know, and we did scan it in the last episode, but I know where it is. There's some sulfur up near this coal mine. And I need that to unlock the basic ammunition. Deja vu there. I'm sure I've picked that up before. So you combine generally coal and sulfur to make... I didn't pick up any more beams. I don't need Mark 3s. I'll be fine. You combine coal and sulfur to make basic ammunition stuff. And up here there's a sulfur node. So I'm just going to clear a bit of vegetation. Uh, I can, I've just spotted a spitter there as well, right in front of me. So I've got some flora and fauna to clear. To do what I want. And I did this area in my last save. Where basically this plateau on top of this 
rocky um don't know what the correct geological term for it is but this this area basically up on top of this high ledge or plateau small for a plateau but is I made it a munitions factory, and I probably will do that again because it's convenient that you've got coal and sulfur right next to each other. We're going to have to sort out this spitter, though. Oh, there's another one. Where is he? There. Try not to fall off. Couple bits of innards, and then we'll clear a bit more vegetation. Down here, basically, there is a sulfur node somewhere. There it is. I think it's a normal. And we need sulfur to unlock the sulfur tree. So. Let's start with put down some foundations. Oh hello. Spitter trying to trying to do what spitters do. I can stick a miner on that. There's quite a lot you can do remotely. But I will end up jumping down there and clearing some of this vegetation. And then I need to line that up more or less with my miner here. So that's directly west of me. So if I face directly east, that should be... Maybe I'll do one more. And then bring that back. And I'll, t I'll take that up as a tower from there, actually. Take that up. This is all world grid aligned. So I can bring that back to here. That sounds that looks perfect. But I am gonna have to jump down there and clear some of these trees because they're bothering me. Which means I'm gonna have to kill the stuff. There's at least one spitter I can hear. That actually sounds more like two. Let's just chop, chainsaw what I can from the platform. So I can see the spitter at the minute. I can't even see it. Oh, you get silica out of that. That's handy. So these tubes, when you chop them up with a chainsaw, they give you silica as well. I know I need silica to unlock some stuff. Right, where are you, mate? I can hear you. you. You're pretty close. There you go. Right. You, mate. You need to sort your anger management issues out. I know there's a switch to just turn that off nowadays, but... Right, I don't know that I like the alignment of that miner. Generally, because they don't grid a line, generally I prefer to have them perpendicular to the output. And then probably move that whole thing. And have my output belt from here. Yeah, the fact that they don't world align is sometimes a bit triggering for me. Just a little chicane corner. And then we'll do how our vertical here. To that height and then let's get a ladder first and then we'll do a lift at the right height from the bottom and spaced off the wall 
and then we can jump up and get the height right. And this isn't temporary. This is probably going to be the minor location that I'll use for this sulfur node permanently. That's why I'm taking a little bit more time over it. Power. Connect that to there. Actually, I want... I probably want power on this side. This was a little bit less in the way. But it still runs without clipping to there. And then once I power that up, Continue ignoring that. Run this as long as it will go. This will end up being upgraded because that will end up being a 600. I think I'm, I didn't check it, but I'm pretty sure that's a normal node, which means that eventually Mark three miners and full overclocking, it will produce 600 sulfur per hour. Is my bag full now? Right, so that's clipping the ground and I don't like it. Don't like that. So I'm going to have to get rid of that and that and that and that. And that, and then we'll put one back on top as it was, and then we'll put a two meter on top going that way. And that's our bridge. Make that look right from the top later. But yeah, I, di I didn't like that the way that was ground, um, clipping the ground. So ladder back up. Lift. Comply. Power. And then here, let's see if that go that does that clip the ground properly. Yes, it does. That's fine then. So that's the height that I now will have the platform, and therefore it clears, gets rid of that terrain clipping nonsense. Boing, good. So, belt out to here, and then back down. And back where we were, but without the ground clipping. Again, this is permanent. So I want to be a bit more careful with it. How far will it go? Right, now we've got sulfur when it's powered up and coal. I think. How far along can I go? Before I'm clipping the back of coal mine. So that's fine. I think what we'll do is build something out 
I've just spotted a slug. I just see the, the lights off the top of it. That Do that before we end up burying it. Now, it's a fairly trivial thing, right? But, got, oh, hello. Yeah. But, I like to do things that look a little bit nicer. And obviously that's a subjective statement. But I think... Something like that. This makes the concrete from a distance when you view it completely non-functional. I don't do a lot of aesthetic stuff because I'm not the most creative of people, but I just think it looks a little bit smarter. And the same here. If I take that one, in fact, if I take all of those for now, turn that into a two meter. to there and then put the four meter below it into the ground and then a couple of those it just makes it look a little bit well did that the wrong rotation Just makes it look a little bit easier on the eye. Doesn't make much difference. Doesn't really matter structurally at all. But it just makes it look a little bit nicer. And so most of that dressing up type stuff, if I do it at all, I will do it off cam. I'm just thought I'd do that a little bit. And then here, where we've got... This is a two meter platform. I'm going to go out five... And we'll make a little platform for... Now, this bit is temporary. What I'm about to do... So, the mine and the way of getting the sulfur back to this platform is probably permanent. This bit that I'm about to do is temporary to allow me just to get through some unlocks. So, what we need is... Um... Put a ladder there. Probably don't need it with these jump boots, but stick a ladder there. And then we need a lift. To the right height. And then temporarily, so you, you can see that this, that, I don't know if you can see it, but that's at a slight angle. Because this coal mine, for whatever reason, is, is not embedded on the concrete. It's slightly higher. So I'm going to delete that belt temporarily. I'm going to put a splitter on the correct line. And then we're going to get that belt, Mark 3. Done. And done. So we've now not interrupted our coal power supply. back to and then that'll bring me a maximum of 60 per minute here and the logic here is that I'm consuming 240 coal down that belt to the power plant but this is overclocked to produce 270 so therefore I've got a 30 excess so this belt will do a, a maximum of 60 but I only want it to do 30, but I can I can control that on the factory side. So now I've got a 
sulfur and coal both come into this platform. What are we going to put in? We are going to put in an assembler. It doesn't matter if it's tight, that's fine. Now we will do coal to here and sulfur to there. And then that can now unlock our new recipe, black powder. And I'll stick the sulfur and coal that I've got in there. That produces 30 black powder per minute. Which, for now, I'm just going to stick into a storage box. So I'll put a large box. We'll accumulate quite a lot of it. Nope, I haven't got beams. Okay, fair enough. It'll be a small box. That'll be fine. Still be plenty for, upload, uh, for uh, unlocks, and that's what I really want it for. Yep, that is on the centre line I wanted it to be. And we start getting black powder. Right, so I'll delete some of that, don't need it. It's probably enough to be comfortable. And any time I need black powder, I'll have to run here. And again, I'm not doing a central storage area yet because I haven't got the smart splitters that I would need to make that work properly. So now we've got a little black powder factory running, basically. And at some point... So what's this running at? I don't need to clock this because it's running all the time. I could run... This is only going to consume 15 coal. So it's not going to put my fuel station, my power station in jeopardy. And then that is a nice convenient segue to the next thing I wanted to do while this is all running is go and upgrade the power station. So I need belts for that. Well, oh, that was too big a jump. One point of health damage. Let's go and see how much, how many beams we've accumulated. Good, loads. Yeah, I probably want to clear my packs a little bit before worrying too much about this. I'm going to have to put a temporary box down because I need to clear my packs. Let's stick all my concrete and see what we got. I need biomass, so let's craft up a bit of biomass. A couple hundred should do it, but we'll craft up 400. That'll do. And then in the MAM, there is this one to unlock, Mycelia plus biomass which gives us the ability to make fabric which then gives us the ability to make parachutes which I haven't really used some of this stuff then you get into the point you need plastic again to unlock it uh, fabric plus rotors would give us another equipment slot and then different types of explosives but we're not ready to do that yet what are we ready to do we'll unequip those We'll take those. We don't need that lot. Let's see what else we can unlock. Nutrients. This is what I was after. So we've got enough to unlock this nutrient-based medical inhaler. And that has now completed one of these branches. The first of our branches completed, which is nice. can't really do anything else until I get out in the field a bit. I need to do some exploration. I just want a little bit more silica because that gives me six more inventory slots. Right, anyway, no good crying over what we haven't got. I'll stick that silica in there for now. And then get rid of this box. 
which will put everything back in my inventory. And we're going to go and have a look at more concrete. No, should be enough. We're going to go and look at expanding our power supply. Let's just unload the excess leaves and wood and that bit of biomass that I handcrafted. So now we're going to run down to the power supply. And one of the things I did, uh, I don't remember if I did it off episode, but that coal mine that we were just at, where we did the sulfur work, I've already upgraded it to Mark II, as you saw, because it's clocked to do 270. And then I've partially upgraded these belts to be Mark III. And what I need to do now is that's now Mark III to here. That's also a lift that's Mark III. All of the belts to the power plant need to be Mark III as well. And we'll get this upgraded real quick. And again, I said that in the last episode, I said I would upgrade this off cam. But I've decided that I don't really want to do that in this early stage of the playthrough. Change that to Mark 3. And unless I've missed something, which I quite often do, that should now be Mark 3 all the way to here. And then I also want the spine... To be Mark 3. And then we need to basically extend our platform a little bit. Didn't need to go that far. We don't need to go that far. Not sure how far I need to go with it, really. Let's do... That for now, and then we can always add if we need it later. Go back up the top. And we need to extend this as well. Because we're going to build eight more cold power generators. I bet I haven't got the parts to do that. Yeah, maybe. Right, so turn it round, align it. One. Yeah, I have gone a bit too far with the platform. That's all right. One, two, three, four. We'll do the belt work first, and then we'll sort out water. So that means a floor hole for each of the new... Generators. With a lift. And all this is fine to be Mark 1 because they only consume 15. So a lift. And then I'll go down below and get that because the coal is the thing that will take a bit of time to get running. I feel water will probably be easier. So another lift down one and facing inwards. And another one down one and facing east. And then we 
need to put splitters down the middle. And again, this is extending the manifold that I used when I built this coal plant, but a manifold works fine for something like this. You don't need a perfectly balanced line. Mark three belts down the spine, just because I always do that on a manifold. Fastest belts I can manage. And then mark ones to connect the endpoints where appropriate, and in this case it is appropriate. And that'll start no, that's wrong. That's annoying. <laughs> is that the only one that's wrong? Let's do these first before I build. Yeah, just that first one wasn't lined up properly. Put the splitter in the wrong place. It needs to be there. Yeah. Mark three. And then mark one. And that should now... Mark three. Because I took that out. That should now be populating the manifold. And that'll back up over time because we're only consuming the 120 that the original eight have. Next thing we probably ought to do is get some water fixed. So part of that will involve putting power in, but for the minute, let's just get... Ooh, I need to extend my working platform off the back. How far out do I want to come? I'll do this line so that can go. So we'll extend the water. Nice corner. It's funny that it doesn't copy the colour when you clone a pipe it does for, for like things like concrete but it doesn't so i'll have to color all of these pipes later but that's a trivial concern right uh water to here and it, i'm not expecting people to remember this i've got three lines of water coming from these six water collectors each line is carrying 300 which is its capacity and three uh, 300 is five and a third generators worth of water so what i need to do is merge those three lines so that the five and a third times three equals 16 generators i need to put power at the line and then that can also come down here because i need to power up these two water collectors weren't Ever powered. That's that one powered. And then we'll take a line from there. It's a bit quick and dirty, but out the back. And then across here so that I don't clip the cable. And then connected. that one and that one so now we've got all six i never bothered powering these two up because i wasn't using them before but now we've got all six and that those last two that i've just done will be pumping water into here as you can see then we come through here uh, probably copy these and put them there, I think these are max height. Pipe those up. We'll get rid of the two supports in the middle. 
because I feel that the pipes support themselves based on this more so than these spindly little beams do so beams at the end just because but in the middle I don't bother with the beams and then what we have to do is join this all up as a manifold so that because if we just connected all of these new generators to these pipes now it would start starving the first ones of water because they're consuming all the water they need and this is eight generators each side is too much for one pipe so what we need to do is put down a junction on the center line and then I can connect the two pipes to that junction so now we've got one pipe network with 10 and two thirds worth of water and if we then bring this water to here and connect it at this point in this junction where the three pipelines join together this junction has got 16 generators worth of water So basically we've created a manifold again of water but this time the fluid dynamics merges so that the whole pipe network is now receiving enough water for 16 generators. Then we need to put more junctions in snapped to each of the new generators. of which there are four on each side. And then we need to do pipes set to uh, horizontal to vertical. And we do them from the top in and that will start flowing the water to the generators. And I'll colour all of this lot another time. Probably won't do that on cam. That cosmetic level of stuff I'm quite happy to do off. So that should be each of them receiving water and coal and the only thing remaining is to power them up or connect them to the grid so we'll put another pole out the back of this one uh, on that line and here and then that connects to the grid and then we can connect each of the new ones pole needs to be a mark 2 And it'll take a little while for this all to balance with the manifold and all and so on, but um, we should. We were, we were producing before 600 megawatts of electricity. We should now be producing 1,200 because we've doubled our capacity. there at this point I, I expect this to drop a little bit because the water and the coal have to back the sort of balance but there we're producing 1200 so we're now we've got plenty of headroom again we were getting really close with our consumption to our maximum production and the gray line is because just as a reminder we've still got six biomass burners on the network and we probably will keep those for a bit 
and that is now fully re-upgraded. And again, there's a bit of cosmetic stuff to do, colouring pipes and so on, but generally that is good to go. And we get back to base. Out of interest, I'm going to go and see how much black powder I've got, because it might be enough to unlock some things. There's a quite interesting alternate recipe that I would like to get called compacted coal, where you combine sulfur and coal in the way that I'm currently combining it to make black powder. You can combine it in a slightly different way with an alt recipe to make plenty of that in there. Just take all of that for a minute. You can combine sulfur and coal in a different recipe to make compacted coal. And I believe, if I remember rightly, it's more efficient in terms of what gets sent to the generators. And it probably means that I could run the same generators with less coal and sulfur input. And therefore give me coal and sulfur excess up here to use for munitions. Or if I needed to, uh, enough compacted coal would run 32 coal plants. So yeah, options for scaling up power even more relatively soon. I'm also going to grab some of these and we'll see what we can unlock. Some sulfur. I can't do that because it requires plastic. This blue stuff is plastic. I can't make that yet. I can unlock the detonator, which is useful. I can also unlock another hand slot, which is useful when you've just gained another tool. So this one, experimental power, has got to be the compacted coal that I was talking about. So that, oh, that's terrible fuel. So that's an oil based product and I'm not doing oil yet. So I haven't reached the level of doing oil, but that is compacted coal. Oh, that's interesting the way they've done that then. So that needs, that needs a hard drive. So that's not, it's an alt recipe, but it's not one that you get through RNG of unlocking hard drives. That's one where you need to specifically get a hard drive for that recipe. That's interesting. So I need to find a hard drive to do that. Uh, we unlock the ability to make a well nobelisk. We can just make out of pipes and black powder. But where's my nobelisk detonator thing? So that needs a scanner, and I need more cable. So I can make a scanner. Need one of those, and then I need to go and get some cable real quick. Be right back. Right, now I can make a Nobelist Detonator. And I can make some Nobelisk. Nobelisk is just ammunition for the Detonator. Right, so now I've got a Nobelisk Detonator. That's another hand slot. I've got some... I don't need that much black powder. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another storage box at the back here. Just as a... Just as an overflow. Of stuff that I don't think I need much of. So like black powder for example. That'll do for now. Maybe put some of these beams... into the input box here. I only need to carry like th maybe three stacks of them. So we've unlocked Nobelisk. And if you remember near the steel plant, when we do an exploration, we found some caterium with rocks on top of it. And there are some up here. So just to demonstrate how this works, you can see 
that there are rocks there. Looks like a yellow slug underneath them. So what I'm going to do, just to show how this works, is I'm going to make a temporary bridge to get up. I've never been up on this platform before. Take, make a temporary bridge to get up there. And I'm going to run down to the Caterium for it. But look at all these big rocks. So you throw one on there, reload. You can do multiples at a time. Throw one on there, reload. Try not to fall off. You can throw them a fair distance. Reload. Another one behind. One on there. And then stand back, because there is a blast radius. And when you tap the right mouse button, hopefully this blast radius is far enough away. When you tap the right mouse button, just get rid of that because it'll look better. When you tap the right mouse button, it detonates all the ones that you've planted. And that gets rid of those big rocks. And yeah, there's a yellow slug underneath it. Which I haven't got space to carry. What have I forgot? I can delete some flowers lot. And some limestone. Yellow slug. Shame it's not pink. I need pink. Right. And then reload and we'll get rid of just to be tidy. That one. And you end up with significantly more powerful up to nuclear explosives that you can use with this thing and it's it's quite fun in a way uh i don't think there's anything up there do i need to look up there no not at the moment because we're out of time basically whoa 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 whoa, whoa. just caught it <laughs> be what a load of metal beams what did i just delete did i accidentally delete a storage box or something yeah i did that's the storage box somehow i clipped the storage box when i was control clicking uh, let's just get a bunch of stuff stuck in there so that i can get that empty got to tidy up after myself And then all of those metal beams can go in there. And I'll take out three lots. So that is going to be enough for this episode. I think we've got quite a bit done. Power is now double the capacity and pretty stable at 1200 megawatts. So loads of headroom for me to build something new and big. Useful. Probably we'll go and do some Caterium in the next episode. That's the most likely thing. Somewhere over there, there's a Caterium pure node that's not too far from the, the temporary steel works. It'll probably still be a temporary Caterium, but at least it'll be enough to get me moving on unlocking other stuff. So we'll probably do quick wire Caterium stuff next episode. But we've got a temporary black powder works up on top of the hill. We've doubled our capacity. Uh, we've got an awesome sink here, taking the excess from this factory so that it won't back up. It'll just run now indefinitely. And we've unlocked a bunch of stuff. So I think that's fairly, that's fairly good progress, if a little bitty. And then next episode, well, I have two things I have to do. I have to do loads of exploring because I definitely need more hard drives. And I also would like to build Caterium. So that's probably two episodes rather than combining them. We'll see. See how we go. But that is going to be a wrap for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, any suggestions or comments, most welcome. I hope to see you in the next episode. In the meantime, thanks and goodbye.